apa yang bagi saya menarik untuk video editing course ni sebab dia package sekali dengan After Effects dengan Premiere Pro As for me, this is like an opportunity for me to improve my career I dapat uh, belajar banyak benda uh, in editing um, let's say After Effects so it, it helps a lot uh, Mr. Ismawi, dia friendly banyak bantu kalau kita tak faham dia ulang balik walaupun dah dah, dah jauh tapi dia boleh ulang balik and thanks when i don't understand a certain thing uh, i ask him and is very helpful uh, sebab i masa yang first day pun memang banyak benda yang baru belajar dan yang second day pun uh, still pun banyak benda baru banyak benda baru yang saya boleh explore semua it does benefit me a lot uh, of course uh, I've learned a lot from uh, you know using After Effects and uh, Adobe Premiere. Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. A uh, very good morning. Um, let's see now how many of us today. Uh, right. Okay, there's a few here. Um, who is here? I see Samuel Lee and um, who is Atika. A uh, very good morning to you. Okay, while waiting for the others. Um, Samuel, Atika, perhaps you can grab your favorite beverage, a cup of coffee, tea, Milo, hot chocolate, or Horlicks, Ribena, whatever is your favorite beverage. Perhaps you can grab your drink now and we can have a chit chat session. Yep. Okay, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, uh, all right, uh, Smita, if you can hear me, perhaps you can tell me how many participants have arrived. Yeah? How many participants have joined in this uh, conversation? Okay, right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, once again, before I continue, uh, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Surin Victor. I don't know about Atika and Samuel. Were you with us last month for our first coffee conversation? Were you? Can I have a response from either Atika or Samuel? 
Okay, let's see now. Ah, right. Ah, Atika. So, Atika, um, you got the um, M factor assessment, right? And um, if you haven't, then perhaps I'll give it to you again. But otherwise, I don't think I received any response from you when it came to the M factor assessment. Uh, it was emailed to you after the program last last month. Okay, let's see now. There's other chats. Can I? No. Oh. All right. Uh, Samuel. Oh, oh, Samuel says no. That means Samuel has not met me. Uh, has not been out in our coffee conversation. Okay, I did and I replied, but then that's it. Oh, you replied. Okay, but I haven't ref uh, received your email, Atika. Uh, I haven't received your self assessment. Maybe I will check with the organizer about it. Okay, uh, whereas for Samuel, he says that no, he hasn't joined our coffee conversation. Okay, Samuel, uh, very briefly, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Sir Victor again, um, and I've been in the training industry for the past 15 years. Uh, not just training, but learning and development uh, for the past 15 years. Uh, before I became a speaker, I was in colleges and universities. Uh, I conduct programs, uh, I do coaching, and I do a bit of uh, therapy as well. And uh, I would like to share with you uh, the things that I've uh, found out throughout my years in this industry regarding human behavior. When it comes to uh, personal development and people skills, I would like to share with you uh, my knowledge and experience. And also, I would like to share with you which I think is equally powerful is my failures in life. And what is it that uh, we, all of us can learn about our failures in life. Okay, is that okay, Samuel? Is there anything you want to know about me? If I don't miss it. Yes, Atika and Samuel. All right. Okay, so um, Atika, if you have any questions, uh, please just go ahead and ask. Otherwise, I'll be asking you questions. All right, deal? Now, uh, let me share with you a quote, yeah? Um, whatever we plant in our subconscious mind and nourish it with repetition and emotion will one day become a reality. Now, it says here subconscious mind. Whatever that we plant in our subconscious mind um the subconscious mind is between conscious seda and when you are passed out or when you are asleep unconscious so in between there is a state called uh, the subconscious state yeah and uh, subconscious mind is like this um uh, atika and samuel i'm sure you you drive yeah so when you drive you don't think about it as to how to hold the steering wheel uh, how to turn the signal, how to step on the brake, how to engage in the gear, you just drive. Uh, because this activity that you do is no longer controlled by your conscious mind. When you first started learning how to drive, yes, it was controlled by your conscious mind. But uh, since it has become a repetition, yeah, uh, it is repetition, yeah, all right, and it is uh, something that you don't need to put any input in it, yeah, it becomes automatic. It's called autopilot. Now, why do we have this subconscious mind? Is that, or why do we have this autopilot whereby we don't need to think anymore? It's because the brain wants to conserve energy, focus, attention. Yeah, uh, this kind of things we don't need to think anymore. For example, breathing, uh, heartbeat, uh, tying your shoelace, cooking, maybe our uh, typing, uh, doing work it has become subconscious so uh whatever that we plant into our subconscious uh, how how can we plant things into our sub subconscious later i'll share with you some tips yeah oh yeah hi hi samuel thank you thank you for joining us yeah whatever that we plant into our sub subconscious uh will become a reality it will be manifested so Whatever things that you put into your subconscious, yeah, whether it's good or bad, will become a reality. So when it comes to smoking, 
when it comes to uh, unwanted habits like cursing or swearing or um, uh, bottling up your emotions or rather suppressing um, uh, past uh, uh, thoughts and uh, events, yeah. Now, these are unwanted habits which we don't consciously control. It's already become in our subconscious. So, uh, whatever that we uh, nourish in our subconscious and whatever that we repeat will become a reality. Habits, yeah, habits will determine your goals. Habits will de determine your destiny. The things that we do every day will help get you closer to your goal. So if you have a bad habit, uh, the things that, that have, and the bad habit has been uh, practiced for years, it will bring you to your destiny, your goal, which is, for example, yeah, smoking, it will bring you to uh, bad health. All right, now, why am I talking a lot about the subconscious, subconscious, subconscious is because um, I did a course in hypnotherapy whereby we put the patient or rather we put the client under hypnosis, a state of trance, and then we give them some positive reaffirmations. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll talk more about it. Yeah, I'll talk more about it. But uh, let me try to stick to what I have here for today. Uh, yes, I have an agenda, but I, I won't really be strict on the agenda. Uh, it's just a casual conversation yeah, between myself and everyone here. Okay, uh, Samuel and Atika, if you are ready, then I will uh, show you a short video clip. Oh no, wait, hang on. Yes, a short video clip, yeah. Is that okay with you, Samuel and Atika? Okay, great, fantastic. Just to kick start, uh, let me see now, share video, okay. Not here. All right. Let me see. Yeah. Hmm. Uh huh. There you go. Some TV. Just give me a second. All right. Let me know if you can hear it, yeah? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much. So, uh, once again, grab your coffee or your tea or your Horlicks or your hot chocolate, yeah, and we'll get started. Okay. No sound. Uh, Samuel, you couldn't hear it, is it? Yeah. No sound. Only on and oh, Atika, you can't. You're gonna hear it. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, no sound as well. Ah, who oh, we have here? Tan Ken. Tan Ken also couldn't hear it. Oh, that's strange. The organizer said that they could hear it. Hmm. Uh, never mind. It's okay. Uh, later on, when I play another video clip, we'll see if uh, we can hear it. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Let me check with the organizer. Uh,
No audio. Huh? Okay. Never mind. We'll try again later. Right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, why is it called the drowning climber? The topic for today is the drowning climber. Yeah. Um, how is it that, okay, it says here, the two simple reasons, the anxiety and ways to overcome it to stay present. Yeah. Right. Uh, the reason why it's called drowning climber, it's my experience my experience uh, as a climber and how is it that I had this, uh, something happened in 2017. Uh, it happened on the 14th of February, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's the 14th February. It's uh, Valentine's Day, correct? 14th Feb? Okay. So what happened is that um, I went to Terengganu with another friend of mine and we went to Teluk Kalung. Yeah, it's it's a it's a, it's a it's a stretch of uh, beach. Uh, I'll show you a picture later. It's a stretch of beach here, where I didn't know this, but it is actually a place for surfers, for people to go surfing. Uh, meaning, to say that the waves are big enough for surfing. Yeah, and um, little did I know that there's a lot of um unwanted incidents uh over at the local all right so um i went to drangano because i had a meeting with one of the human resource managers but i went a day earlier and i met up with another friend so there was three of us yeah we went to the beach okay and um it's my nature of being uh curious and being adventurous uh we i i i just to my friend that hey Let's let's get in. Let's get into the water. Yeah. At that time, the tide was coming in. Yeah. It was about um, I would say close to seven. The tide was coming. In. The winds were strong and the waves were starting to build up. So um, the two of us went in, but my friend he stayed on the beach. Yeah, he didn't. Want, he was a local guy, so for him, uh, I mean, he's experienced the the the, the beach many times before. So he he said, "No, oh, it's all right. You guys go ahead." Okay, so let me share with you some slides and see whether I can tell you the story based on the slides. Okay. Right. So this is a picture I got from Google. It's Kalung. I remember it, it is this place. It's exactly this place that I went to. Um, but the waves were coming in. I mean, the waves were building and it was uh, yeah, getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. The waves, the, the winds were strong and the water was super cold. All right, so we went in and then we started to catch the wave. Yeah, we caught the wave and then we sort of like body surfed to the shore. So we caught the wave and we went ashore. Okay, now my friend, he... Uh, he decided to uh, he decided to call it call it a day, and then he went to, uh, started moving towards shore. And then I told him that, hey, uh, let me just catch one more wave. Yeah. Uh, now because the wave was already too big, too strong. Um, yes, it it did push me closer to the shore, but then it pulled me back. So I started swimming and started swimming and started swimming and started swimming and started swimming. Then I became very, 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 very tired. Okay, yep. So let me just stop there halfway and let me get back to you. All right, so what happened was uh, we caught the wave and then it pushed us towards the shore, yeah? And then we caught another wave and then it pushed us towards the shore. Uh, now, when I caught the last wave, my friend was already closer towards the shore. Uh, it pulled me back. Yes, it pushed me to the shore, but then it pulled me back in. So I was going, uh, I would say, in a triangle. Where while I went up, I was being pushed to shore, and then I was being pulled back in. Yeah. 
Uh, so I started swimming. I started swimming. I started swimming, and I've been swimming. Uh, I just only uh, see the title, but they didn't see the photo. Oh, uh, you just saw the title, but didn't see the photo. Uh, okay. Uh, let Let me show you again. Yeah, let me show you the slides again. Yeah. Uh, not to worry the Tanjian. Okay. So I struggle and I struggle and I struggle. Now, one thing about swimming is that I've been swimming since I was seven years old. So I thought, you know, this is kacang lah. I just, I just power my way through until the shore. So I started paddling and paddling and paddling and paddling and paddling. And then I became really, really tired because the, the, uh, though the waves hit the shore, but the current pulled me back in. Yeah. And I couldn't, um, I couldn't feel the, 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 the floor. You know, I couldn't feel the ocean floor. So um, now, I, again, once again, yeah, in retrospect, everything's 2020. Uh, I literally, I know that in the East Coast, the uh, the ocean floor is not gradual, like uh, what you get in Port Dixon. It is, uh, it slants a bit, but then it drops greatly, yeah, because of the huge waves, yeah, that, that uh, uh, eats up the ocean floor. It 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 has a very drastic drop. Okay, so I could I couldn't feel the ocean floor, and I kept paddling and paddling and paddling. And I became very tired, and I started to choke. Yeah, and also plus the conditions, the water were was very cold. Um, and then you, I did what we are all are not supposed to do in that kind of situation, which is panic. I panic. Uh, so when I panic, that's it. I lost it. I, 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 my, my, my breathing was out. My strokes were out, and all I could do was to just scream and shout for help. I, I was calling on my friends. Yeah. Okay. So they, they didn't know what to do. <laughs> the, the one guy was on the beach. Yeah. He didn't know what to do because if he goes in, then he might be pulled in as well. And my other friend was already closer to the shore also. He was, shall I go in or shall I, shall I go in or shall I get help? Okay, now to cut the story short, there was a surfer, a stranger, a total stranger who saw the commotion and he got into the, he got into the uh, sea with his surfboard and he put me, uh, put me on the surfboard and he put me back to shore. Now, I was rushed to the hospital and then I was, uh, I was, I, of course, I was vomiting. I couldn't walk. Um, I was carried into the car, and then they rushed me into the hospital. Uh, this was Kamalman Hospital, yeah. So if anyone here is from Trungano, familiar with Trungano, okay. Uh, let me just show you the slides once again, yeah. Let's see now. Uh, okay. All right. So. Um, I was being pulled out by this um, stranger surfer. I was rushed to the hospital and I was in induced coma. Yep. And when I recovered, when I gained consciousness, I was surrounded by all these machines. <laughs> um, my left arm, my right arm, my prior parts, um, things were hooked up with wires and tubes. And... Um, uh, here you see is my sister. She came all the way from KL. And, and, okay, now, once I recovered, I somehow miraculously, after a few months, I uh, went on a trip to Europe with uh, three of my other friends. Uh, these are some pictures of me, Europe, which I thought I, is impossible. That will never happen. Yeah. So what are the lessons here? What is it that I would like to share with you regarding this whole episode? Yeah, from, from drowning and then um, a few months later going on a trip to Europe. Now, that trip on the Euro is not really the lesson, it's the drowning part. Uh, what, what is the lesson behind this? Uh, there's a lot actually, uh, there's a lot that I could have learned that, that we can learn that I can share with you. Uh, but one of the things is that sometimes uh, things are beyond our control. Now, remember, I've been swimming for since I was seven years old, yeah, since I was a kid. But even so, I almost drowned. Yeah. 
So we can be very good at something, but that is no guarantee that it will pull us through. Um, for example, finances as well. We could have this investment, that investment, this savings, that savings, but sometimes things happen and there goes our investments, there goes our savings. Uh, it's the same with our career as well. We can be so passionate about it. We can be so much interested uh, about it. And somehow we are not wanted by the organization anymore because uh, this has happened to me as well. So one of the things that I learned is that sometimes some things are just beyond our control. We can be, we can be prepared. Yeah, we can be prepared, but uh, it does not guarantee us uh, immunity. It does not guarantee us that uh, something unwanted and something undesired will happen to us. Yeah. All right. Um, other than that, what else? Um, I was really in a bad state of mind back then. Oh, and I think I was, uh, I had a hypothermia. I had a kidney failure. I went for dialysis for seven times. And then um, <laughs> uh, thank God that my kidneys uh, recovered. It was not a uh, permanent damage. It was a uh, reversible kidney damage. That's what the doctors call it. Yeah. So after seven uh, rounds of dialysis, oh, they cleared me. Uh, I also had bacterial infection and uh, what well, else? Pneumonia. So, uh, wow, that was in 2017. Now, when when I was down and out, when I was in the hospital bed, I was in ICU for six days. Yeah. Um, I thought to myself that uh, I'm never going to be able to climb again. Um, I'm never uh, able to think, think things. The, 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 the most, the prominent thought in my head that repeated over and over again was, why? Why did this happen to me? Why did this happen to me? Why? Why, 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 why? Uh, over and over and over and over again, yeah. How could something, uh, how could this happen to me? Why did this happen to me? Okay, right. So that was my experience. Uh, there's a lot more that I can uh, share with you regarding uh, what I learned from the incident. So if you have any questions, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, whether it's uh, Samuel, whether it's Tan Kian or Atika, if you have any questions regarding my near death, near drowning experience, uh, please uh, do ask me, yeah. Yeah, also I learned about the the importance of having a medical insurance. <laughs> that also really, really helped me a lot, having a medical insurance. Okay. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have a question for you. What are some of your regrets that you have about the past? So let me just turn this on. What are some of the regrets? Anyone? Do you have any regrets? Your failures, your uh, mistakes, your trials and tribulations, your disappointments and frustrations maybe uh, disasters and tragedies that you wish it didn't happen to you? Do you have any regrets regarding your financial decisions, your career decisions, your relationships, your health perhaps? Yeah. Okay, now, uh, not spending enough quality time with my loved ones. Ah, yeah, all right, great. Thank you, Samuel. Not spending enough quality time. Thank you, Samuel, for sharing. What about the rest? Anyone else? Do you have any regrets about your past?
Okay, let's see. Atika, Bing, Tuha, dan myself. Ah, yes. Okay, for Atika, um, I have uh, I have a short exercise for you to do. Yeah. Uh, for not being too hard on yourself. Now, one thing I realized about individuals who are hard on themselves is that they aim for perfection. They try to get things done perfectly. Yeah. Uh, there's no harm in that, but instead of pursuing perfection, I'd rather if you pursue progress. As long as you can get better, incremental, uh, I would say, improvements on a regular basis, uh, it is less stressful than trying to achieve perfection. Uh, I've come across, Atika, I've come across participants who, um, who share your uh, thought or rather who share a sentiment that they are being too hard on themselves. They appear very strong. They appear very, um, I would say, um, uh, I would, what's the word, very uh, confident. Yeah. Uh, but I deep down, what I found out is that they try to project a perfect, uh, a perfect, uh, what do you call that, version of themselves. Uh, maybe because they feel that they, they have a lot of responsibilities and they need to uh, perform well so that they don't let other people down. Yeah. So having this thought of not wanting to let other people down, I need to do the best. I need to get the best. Why? Right? Because I need to give it to them, to them, to them, to them, to them, to them. Um, especially you want to provide for your parents, you want to provide for your family. All right. So you may take it too hard on yourself. Uh, sometimes you just need to give you a pat your, on, on, on the back. Yeah. Give yourself a pat on the back and say that, no, it's fine. I did my best and um, I'm going to continuously try to be a better so-and-so. All right. Now, one thing about regrets, yeah. It is normal. It is healthy to have regrets. Once again, it's healthy to have regrets. It's healthy to feel guilty. But the difference between... Uh, I would say having a uh, having regrets and feeling guilty about it, and having regrets and uh, making a lesson is that how we feel about it. Student, um, Swami mengalami kemalangan di tempat kerja. Yes, okay, yeah. So these are thank you, Hasna. So these are uh, I would say disasters or rather tragedies yeah, that we so, so don't want, but it has happened. Like, for example, what happened to me four years ago? For me, it was, whoa, it was really a tragedy. I never thought that it will happen to me, yeah, but it happened. Not being able to let go of bad personal and work episodes. Yep, yep, all right. Now, um, if, if we still have a, strong emotional or rather unpleasant feeling about it it means that we haven't really addressed it we haven't really processed it we haven't really moved on if we look back in the past and we feel sad or disappointed or angry about it yeah it means that we haven't moved on we are still stuck in the past or rather we are dragging our feet with all those regrets that we have in the past. Okay, uh, now, one of the things that we can ask ourselves uh, about the past is that, not, not say, don't ask yourself the question, why did it happen to you? Ask yourself, why did it happen for you? Yeah, there's a difference. Now, when when we are caught up with in 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 the thing that we regret about, yeah, 
uh, we only start ask ourselves why, why me, why me, why, why did it happen to me? Why did it happen to me? Why did it happen to me? Um, if you want to move on, yeah, you just want it to be a lesson. Uh, just, just another book on your shelf. Yeah. A past can be, uh, you can use metaphors for all this, yeah. A past can be a, just a chapter or a book in your life. So this will be my drawn experience. This will be the mistake in my career. This will be this way. So those are history books. Now, to turn your regret into a lesson, the question that we can ask ourselves is, why did this happen for me? What is this for? This uh, incident, this tragedy, this downfall, this mistake that uh, happened to me, why did it happen for me? If you ask yourself, what did it happen to you? then uh, I would say it, it's a never ending uh, loop. Uh, you go into a circular reasoning. Yeah. Uh, but when you ask yourself, what did it happen for you? Then you look at the silver lining in the cloud. Okay, right. Uh, all right, yeah, okay. So when you can talk about it objectively, when you can talk about what happened to you, the bad things that happened to you objectively, then you know that it's just another lesson in your life. So for Hasna, was it Hasna? Yes, Hasna. So Swami Malami Kemalangan di tempat kerja. I don't know how 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 recent this was, yeah. But for this kind of things, yeah, things that uh, 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 something that happened with our loved ones, uh, with our family, whether it's death or whether it's uh a permanent disability or whether it's a, it's a it's a it's a disease or medical condition uh we go through uh grief the grieving process so as now you gotta ask yourself uh which stage are you now in yeah are you the first stage is deny then uh we become angry and then we start the bargain and then we uh, we become depressed and sad, and then we accept. So, for example, if uh, something bad happens to one of my family members, yeah, and permanent disability, for example, loss an arm or loss a loss a leg, uh, or cancer, for example, uh, first of all, I'll be very uh, I'll be in denial. Denial is uh, you feel shocked. It's still your your brain still hasn't processed it. Really, this happened to me. Are you sure? Are you sure that happened? Uh, we we think that now this denial is uh, of course uh, it's just for a short moment, yeah. But we tend to think that hey, this can't be. It. This can't be. It. it can't be cancer. It can't be that he lost his sleep. Can't be. It can't be. Okay, after that we become angry. Nah. Uh, we 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 bang the table or we drive very fast or we listen to a lot of music and then we uh we feel that ah why why did this happen? Why did this happen? Why did this happen? Yeah, after being angry, we start to uh bargain as so I think this happened for a good reason. Uh, we we start to argue, we start to rationalize, yeah. Uh, and then we think that hey, maybe this could happen to other people as well. Uh, maybe this is this, this, maybe this, that. We ask a lot of questions, yeah. At that time, our emotions are a bit more stable. And then, because we can't get the answers as to why all this happened, we feel very sad. We feel very depressed. Uh, one thing about being sad, being depressed, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, being guilty, yeah, don't deny it. Don't try to bottle it up. When you feel sadness has its function, we are built to feel sad. Yeah, we are built to feel joy, to feel angry. We are also built to feel sad. The reason why is because it's time for us to uh, separate ourselves from other people we tend to be more solitary when we are sad it's time for us to reflect and it's time for us to just uh flush the emotions out 
whether it's by crying or whether it's by uh, uh, sleeping or whether it's by just by uh, journaling, writing, that is for us to reflect. Now, once we've gone through uh, being depressed or being extremely sad, and then when we can ask, answer the question as to why this happened to me, then you accept it. Once you have accepted the thing that has happened for you, not to you, yeah, for you, uh, that's when you can move on. Yeah, so all my failures in life, I go, I ask myself, what stage am I in? And have I processed it? One of the ways of you processing your past is one of it is seeing a psychiatrist, uh, seeing a psychologist, uh, going for therapy. Uh, but there's, I would say, the simplest way of processing your past is by writing it down. Yeah, simply by writing it down and asking yourself questions. Uh, why, who, what, when? Okay, so what's next? What can I learn from this? Right. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's the thing about the past. Uh, you, we, we need to process it. We need to look at it objectively then your past now becomes a lesson and it doesn't become a burden. Yeah? All right. Now, one thing about anxiety, our topic for today, yeah? one thing about anxiety is that this, we are here now, this is called the present. Yeah? What happened before is our past. And what's going to happen in the future later on it's called the future so we have our present where we are now what happened last year last two years last three years last four years last week last five, ten years and then also we have things that are going to happen now the the three questions that we constantly ask ourselves which makes us very anxious here yeah, is did I do the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? And will I be doing the right thing? So when we are overwhelmed by these three questions here, did I do the right thing? In other words, regret. Am I doing the right thing? Which means the lack of confidence, uh, doubtful, yeah, uncertain. Will I do the right thing? Also, fear. So all these three questions regarding our past, present, and future, that makes us very anxious. That makes us very anxious. So what can we do about it? Like I said just now, when it comes to your past, take it as a lesson. Take it as a Now, if you go see a therapist, they will uh, put you in a state of trance, and then they will... Um, uh, allow your subconscious mind to process whatever uh, issues that you have in the past. Yeah. So I would really recommend if those of you who have um, proof, uh, a, a very traumatic or undesired past and you want to address it, you want to process it, go see a therapist. Yeah? They will help you out. Um, otherwise, yeah, it's as simple as writing it down. Take maybe 20 minutes or half an hour, uh, be alone and just write, write down what is it that has happened to you in the past and what does it mean to you now, today, yeah? Okay. Regarding the future, uh, it is something that we can uh, prepare ourselves for, yeah? Whether it's career, whether it's family, whether it's business, whether it's finances, we can plan for it. But at the end of the day, it is something beyond our control. Uh, we can only control the habits that we have today, the things that we do on a daily basis, which will get us to progress and progress and progress and progress and bring us closer to our goal. But anything can happen, yeah? And uh, it is beyond our control. Uh, for example, I saved up uh, quite a healthy sum of money 
to start my own uh, business. Uh, but then I lost it all simply because I got into a car accident. <laughs> uh, whatever that I've saved up, you know, the pot of money that I've saved up, I need to use it to repair the car. Yeah. So, uh, yes, you can plan, you can strategize, yeah, you can be very analytical about it. Uh, at the end of the day, the future is something that we cannot control. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise, I know I don't know how life would like if we can control the future. Okay, so uh, once again, yeah, remind ourselves the the past. We can't do anything about it, but just to uh, take it as history, uh, take it as a lesson, yeah, for not just yourself but for other people. Hey, what I've learned is that do this, 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 this. If this thing were to happen again, this is what I'll do. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, one thing about your past is, or one thing, one of the ways to know whether you are stuck in the past is, you keep asking yourself, I could have and I should have. You keep saying, I should have and I could have. Uh, when you say that I should have been a better parent, I could have spent more time with my children, I should have uh, done a better job, I could have, yeah, when you when you keep saying I should have, I could have, I should have, I could have, it's like you are always constantly looking over your shoulder and trying to look at your past. Yeah. So change your language. Instead of saying I should have or I could have, you can say that I'm continuously trying to. Yeah. So instead of I should have spent more time with my loved ones. You can say that I'm trying, I'm continuously trying to find ways to spend time with my loved ones. Uh, I'm continuously trying to be a better parent. Yeah, I'm, I'm still trying, I'm still learning on how to uh, be a better son or be a better father or be a better friend. Uh, because when you ask yourself that question, you're looking forward, you're looking for ways you are now looking at uh, problem solving or finding out new ideas, new ways as to how you can improve, how you can get better. Yeah. But when you say I could have, I should have, it means that you're always looking at the past. Yeah. Uh, this, this is a technique in NLP. Uh, I, I'm, I'm guessing some of you, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard of NLP, whereby a slight change of uh, the words and the terms that we use will change the way you think and the way you think will change the way you talk and the way, the way you talk will change your actions and your actions will become your habits and so on and so forth right okay now um worry when it comes to worry also um don't worry don't 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 fight it accept accept the fact that you're worried about something worry is an indicator that uh you need to do something about it you need to be cautious about it yeah uh, so if you worry about your career you worry about your finances you worry about your family uh take one more step which is so what can you do about it because if you just worry 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 what will happen to your quality of life yeah what will happen to your quality of life if you keep uh, regretting about the future and if you keep worrying about the uh, sorry if you keep regretting about your past and you keep uh, worrying about the future what will happen to your quality of life so one of the things is to turn those um, uh, I would say undesired emotions those feelings into something more constructive which is okay now what can I do about it right okay now um, when it comes to anxiety, especially now, eh, where things are volatile, uncertain, uh, complex, and ambiguous, uh, it's not a surprise that a lot of people are feeling anxious about what's going to happen next. Uh, people are feeling stressed out uh, as to when is this MC going to be lifted? Um, how is my business going to run? Um, how can I manage my staff remotely?
for weeks for months yeah we grew up we are so used to living a life where we go out almost every day we go to the office we interact uh we don't do things using this uh video conferencing uh, uh platforms yeah when we want to meet a person we want to have a meeting we go and meet in in physically yeah in flesh so there's a lot of changes that are happening uh, since last year and now and i'm not surprised if a lot of people are feeling stressed out and feeling anxious no, i'm not surprised now uh, if you feel anxious all the time ask yourself how is this going to impact the quality of my life so if you find yourself being anxious, anxious and anxious and anxious and worried and worried and worried, then you really need to do something about it. Yeah. Uh, either see a counselor, see a psychologist, see a therapist, or it as simple as just writing down. If you want, we can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation later. Yeah. You can get my email address and my contact number for the, from the organizer, and then maybe we can have a private conversation. All right. So one of the things that you can do to manage your anxiety is uh, deep breathing, All right? So here's a here's a way on on how we can manage stress and uh, anxiety. Okay, what you do is that you take a deep breath through your nose. Take a deep breath for about seven seconds. How would you do in seven seconds? So when you breathe in, you do this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you take a deep breath. Yeah, you hold it. And then when you exhale, you exhale through your lips, through your, through your mouth, but through your first lips. And when you exhale, it's 11 seconds. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, yeah. 11. It doesn't need to be perfectly seven seconds or perfectly 11 seconds. As long as your exhale is longer than your inhale. So for, you can inhale for five seconds and exhale for uh, nine seconds. You can inhale for if if you are a yoga practitioner or uh, you, uh, you meditation is something that you've been practicing. Yeah, yeah. You can make it longer. You can breathe in for maybe nine seconds and exhale for fifteen seconds. Yeah. Looks like doing diving. <laughs> it looks like doing diving. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about diving. Uh, Tan Kian, I've not, I've not, I've not tried scuba diving, so I don't know whether uh, that's how you breathe it. No, I think for scuba diving, it's using your mouth only. You inhale and exhale using your mouth. Yeah, but this one, deep breathing, you inhale using your nose, and then you hold it. Yeah, you hold it, and then you exhale longer. Yeah, uh, when you inhale, your heart rate goes faster, and then when you exhale, your heart rate goes slower. Now, if your heart rate between your inhale and your exhale is bigger, yeah, then your vagal tone is better. Now, your vagus nerve is the uh, biggest nerve from your head through all parts of your body. Um, vagal tone is when your uh working heart rate and your heart, resting heart rate is uh, there's a big difference yeah one of the ways of increasing your vagal tone is by learning how to take deep breaths so this is something that you can do when you meditate or when you do yoga or once in a while when you're driving when you're stuck in traffic when you're feeling uh angry when you're feeling stressed out when you're feeling anxious these are some things that you can do so maybe you would like to do it for three to four times. Don't do it too much, yeah? Don't do it too much, yeah? Uh, because then if you're not used to it, you might get giddy. Yeah? 
inhale again try to hold it and then you exhale now when you another tip is that when you inhale don't just expand your chest try to bring out your stomach so if you can i don't know if they can see this but when you inhale try to make your tummy go out yeah uh, the Malays call it bunchit lah. <laughs> Try to expand your tummy as well. Push it out. Uh, because then that will give more volume to your lungs. You push your diaphragm down and then more volume for your lungs. That is how you take a very, very deep breath. So you can inhale. Expand your tummy. You can feel a strain at your stomach. And then when you exhale, through your first lips. Okay. Uh, very simple, very simple, but it has really, really worked for me. Uh, when I was way, way younger, I used to be very hot headed, hot tempered. Yeah? And when I learned this uh, deep breathing, uh, somehow it, it has worked. Uh, now, there are two uh, explanations here. What is one is what happens to your physiology, your body, uh, when you introduce in more oxygen into your into your body, then it, you will dissipate your uh, the you will dissipate the cortisol and the what's the other one? Uh, cortisol and the adrenaline that is uh, peaking in your bloodstream. Yeah. When you're tense, when you're ang uh, anxious, yeah, when you're stressed out, you release uh, chemicals in your body that makes your heart beat faster, makes your um, uh, pupils uh, constrict, uh, makes your muscle tense, uh, makes your breathing uh, more rapid. So you want to dissipate those chemicals, and one of the ways is by introducing a lot of oxygen in. So that is the uh, changes that is brought about by deep breathing to your physiology. Now, when you count, when you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's actually to uh, benefit your psychology. It's to channel your thoughts away from what's making you anxious about the future, about your career, about your finances, about your loved ones. It's to uh, Focus your attention away from all those into counting. Yeah, uh, some practitioners they focus on the sound of the breathing, so they breathe into the nose, and they focus on the sound. If you try to inhale, <laughs> the sound produced. Yeah, and then when you exhale, yep, the sound of the uh, I would say the sort of wind through the first lips yeah blowing air yeah it's the sound so you fo uh, focus your mind away from what is uh, bothering you what's stressing you out to either the sound of the breathing or to the counting of the breathing yeah now doing that for about three to four minutes per day is good enough it's good enough so whenever you find yourself anxious, nervous, stressed out, do this deep breathing. Very simple. Yeah. Uh, but in the long run, if you want to address your anxiety, your panic, your fears, yeah, uh, you need to either start writing gently. It's very powerful. Uh, or also you can go see a therapist or a counselor. Yeah. If this is reoccurring. Now, some people have panic attacks. Panic attacks is when you lose control. When, when you're driving and you let go of the steering wheel, do you feel a bit <laughs> panic? <laughs> yeah, right. So when people have panic attacks or severe anxiety, uh, it is because they feel that they're not in control anymore. Yeah? And when you're not in control anymore, you tend to think, hey, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Now, it is a good survival mechanism, but if it's unfounded, like you are, you are fearful or stressed out about things that you cannot control, uh, then that is unhealthy. 
it, when it starts to erode the quality of your life, for example, performance anxiety, uh, you need to present to your CEO or to your boss. You, know, you need to present to, uh, to, to an audience. Now, if you get on stage and if you have severe anxiety, you tend to go blank. You will start to sweat. You start to tremble. If that is going to adversely uh, affect your performance, then go seek professional help. Yeah. Otherwise, a slight, um, I would say, slight uh, nervousness, feeling nervous, feeling slightly anxious, uh, feeling stra slightly stressed out about the situation. Uh, deep breathing is good enough. Yeah. Uh, it is normal. It is healthy to feel stressed out, to feel anxious, to feel nervous. But if it has adverse effects, effects sorry, on the quality of your life, on your performance, then you've got to seek medical help. Uh, sorry, professional help. Yeah. Okay, so that is um, anxiety. That is about worry. Okay, so one of the ways to overcome it is, <clears throat> like I said, it's not deep breathing, journaling, writing it down, yeah, uh, and also reasoning turning it into a lesson and learn to accept, learn to accept the things that is beyond your control. Yeah. Okay. Let's see, what else do I have for you? Now, uh, let's see if you can see this video clip. Eh? Oh, sorry, watch this video clip and whether you can hear it as well. Okay. Right. Any questions for me regarding anxiety, regarding stress, regarding worry? <clears throat> okay. So let me try to play, play you a short video clip and see if it works this time, whether you can hear the audio as well. Share audio. Hmm. Let me see now, yeah. Okay. Okay, let's try. Let's see. This works. Hmm. All right. Looks like it. Okay. Looks like we have an issue. There's no sound, it seems. Hmm. It's alright then. Uh, that it's a song. It's a song called "Que Sera Sera." Uh, it is a reminder for us that sometimes uh, we just don't know. We just gotta let go, and whatever will be, will be. Yeah. No matter how much you prepare for it, no matter how, uh, what are the precautions that you take, uh, we cannot control what's going to happen to us. To a certain extent, yes, of course, we can take precautions, we can wear how much we can have these investments, we can have these savings, but what's going to happen? Okay, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. Yeah. Um, I don't know why is it that I can't share the audio, why is it not working, but it's all right then. So if you have time later, I don't know, when you have time later, do listen to the song. It's a very short song. It's called Okay, Sarah, Sarah. Okay.
So, uh, whatever your past mistakes or whatever your uh, struggles or your challenges or disasters and tragedies that has happened to you, uh, please do process it. Please do turn it into a history lesson. Yeah, um, I see it from an empowered point of view. Uh, for example, if you were abused when you were a kid, uh, try to go back to that uh, time when you were to the, to the incident and look at it from an empowered point of view. Empowered means you're, you're already confident, you've already achieved a certain success in life and also you have uh, uh, different perspectives as to when you were a child. So in therapy, we call this um, uh, regression. We go back in time and we see things, we dissociate. We see things from an adult point of view, from a different perspective as to why it happened. Yeah. Uh, so for example, if let's say uh, I, I, as a kid, I, uh, I made my parents angry yeah, or my parents were very disappointed in me or let's say uh, someone um, um, uh, physically abused me yeah and it was a very traumatic experience um, I regress I go back in time and I replay the incident and I see things from an empowered point of view yeah and uh, give assurance to that seven-year-old kid to that uh, little boy yeah as to it's okay things are fine uh this happens for a reason and the reason is yeah it has made me more confident it has made me realize that it has made me more knowledgeable yeah right so when my friends ask me do i feel traumatized from my drowning incident um no it's because i have uh, processed it I've seen it from an empowered point of view as to uh, why it happened for me. Yeah, the drowning incident. So if you if you if you, if you go to the beach, if you ask me to swim in the ocean, will I do it? I will do it. Yeah, I will do it. I, I still have that a bit of fear, a bit of the anxiety, but it's completely fine. Yeah, it's a defense mechanism, but it wouldn't uh, cripple me. It wouldn't paralyze me uh also um i would like to say that uh relationships are very powerful whether you realize this or not um i was hospitalized in some hospital fantastic yeah top-notch service uh the doctors and the nurses were technicians yeah uh i i completely respect hats off to the doctors and the nurses, they did their job well. Uh, but besides the treatment and the medication, what I would say is equally or if not more powerful is the human touch by your family and friends. Don't underestimate the, the, the power of touch. Just a gentle touch, a tap on the foot or on the uh, back of the hand that is unknowingly un unknowing to us it's actually very powerful yeah. uh, so Maybe I don't have the proper term for it, but it feels very powerful and magical. <laughs> so uh, what's the science behind it? Uh, maybe it's about the hormones. Yeah, Laughter is the best medicine. Uh, touch uh, causes oxytocin bonding. Yeah, uh, I, I'm sure there's science behind it. But uh, in layman's terms, uh, I would say that touch is very powerful and very magical. Yeah. Yeah. I was not aware at that time, but now when I look back uh, in retrospect, I would say that the human touch is very, very powerful. So if you're in a position yeah, to heal someone and you're not a doctor, 
the least you can do is touch the person you know? and uh, maybe make the person laugh, try to joke around. Yeah. So yes, I was feeling very despondent. I was feeling very uh, uh, stressed out. Not stressed out, but I was feeling lost, depressed, I would say depressed uh, when I was in the hospital. And uh, But my friends, instead of um, dwelling on it or instead of uh, being sad, they continued having fun. help me that has pulled me through the difficult situation so uh if you're in a position to visit someone in the hospital or to visit a sick friend or to visit a, a friend who is um, uh, feeling down and depressed uh yes empathize but try not to bring the person further down by you also feeling sad and regret for uh, why this happened. Uh, yeah, I feel sorry for you. Uh, you I wish this didn't happen. Uh. Uh, just pretend that life goes on. Just pretend that, you know, things will get better. It's called being optimistic. Yeah? Uh, just try to uh, 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 be silly and joke around and, and talk about the good things. Talk about the good things that may happen uh, tomorrow or next week or next month. So my friends, when they visited me in the hospital, they kept reminding me about the Europe trip that we are about to do in a few months' time. I thought that I will never be able to uh, uh, continue with the trip, with the plan as, 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 as what we planned. Uh, but somehow they managed to yank me out of the situation and really make it happen. Yeah. When I was lying in the hospital bed, I was like, no way, there's no way I'm going to be able to make it to Europe in this condition. Yeah, I've got tubes on my left and my right and my body parts. I've got wires and tubes. And you want me to go to Europe in this condition? There's no way. But somehow, because of the positivity, it has helped me, uh, I would say, heal. Yeah, And somehow, things turn around 180 degrees. Yeah, So... Things were going fine. It turned around, almost round, and then things turned around again. Yeah, uh, that's very, very uh, powerful lessons that we can learn from it, right? So that's deep breathing. Yeah. Now, uh, yeah, talking about anxiety. Yeah. Actually, there's, there's another video clip that I'd like to share with you. But since uh, I can't, uh, you can't hear the audio. I'll just give you the summary. Um, ladies and gentlemen, ask yourself the question, yeah? How many close friends do you have who you can call in a crisis? When you're having a very difficult situation, yeah, when you're stuck, how many people can you call for help? Try to think about it. One. Two, five, ten. Crisis. When something horrible, something terrible happens to you, how many people can you call for help? Whom, by which you won't feel embarrassed about? Yeah. Think about it. <clears throat> <clears throat> If you have five, it is good for you. I'll say it's good for you. If you have these five people who you can call in times of crisis, I would say it's good for you. Yeah, uh, crisis not just financially, but when it comes to relationship, your marriage, your career, uh, your business, or your internal struggle. If you can call someone and reach out to that someone, knowing that. Uh, you won't be ridiculed, knowing that that person won't uh, 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 turn you down, or knowing that the person won't take advantage of you. That 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 is very powerful. Now, uh, relationships. It is something that we were not taught about in school, but as I progressed in my career, when I uh, 
go for professional certifications. Um, I realized that, yeah, of course, we need money for our business. We need money to live. Yeah, money is just a fuel to keep us going, yeah, to, to keep our engine going. Uh, we, uh, relationships is uh, something so, so powerful that uh, we don't realize how, how much it means to us, actually, as human beings. We were not thought about relationships as to how to strengthen it, how to build it, how to uh, mend it, um, how to uh, uh, cut ties. Sometimes we need to cut ties yeah, and, and, and go our own ways. We are not thought about relationships. But as I learn more and more and more about relationships and how it affects our mental health and our uh, social well-being, I realized that hey, we we need we need we need to know more about relationships, what it means, and that uh, how can we strengthen it further? Yeah. So uh, as we go along in life, trying to build our business, trying to build our finances, our investments, yeah, please, please, if you want to be a millionaire, multi-millionaire, go ahead, go ahead, but make as much money as you want. Uh, but at the same time, try try to uh, strengthen. Yeah, try to increase the quality of your relationships, whether it's with your family, with your spouse, with your friends, with your colleagues, uh, whether it's a professional relationship or a personal relationship, try to find ways to strengthen it. Um, it is very powerful. Uh, we therapists would like to call it biopsychosocial. That means build on your physical, your bio, build on your psychology, and build on your sociology. And you say you and your neighborhood, your community, your friends, your family, bio, psycho, social. Uh, that is how we therapists, we consider psychologists. That's how we view a person. Yep. Okay. Uh, the other point that I'd like to share with you is that being lonely, being lonely releases Cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone. Yeah. <clears throat> Releases as much cortisol as being punched in the face. Can you imagine being punched in the face? How it feels like? Yeah. So that that feeling of being punched in the face is similar to being lonely. Now, there's a difference between being lonely and being alone. Difference, yeah? You can be alone, but not feel lonely. You can be with people and still feel lonely. I have people coming up to me and say that, now, this person is married. This person lives with uh, uh, her, her extended family. But she says that she feels lonely. She feels sad inside. Now, feeling lonely is painful, like being punched in the face, it's painful. So what happens to the immune system? Prolonged pain. Yeah, the immune system is going to be infected. When, when, when there's prolonged pain in your body uh, and you don't address it, it's going to affect your health. It's going to affect the immune system. Yeah. So being lonely and being alone are two different things. Now, so if you find yourself feeling lonely, Yes, it is something that you need to rest. It is painful. Yeah. So uh, that is how terrible being lonely is. My concern is during the MCO, a lot of people are feeling lonely because they don't get to interact. They don't get to socialize. They don't get to uh, be outgoing and gregarious. Yeah. Uh, something, okay, it's, it's like solitary confinement. Uh, that's the worst punishment that you can get in prison is when they put you in solitary confinement. No interaction whatsoever with other people. Yeah, That really cracks you up, up here. Now, uh, they may take away your mattress, they may take away your food, they may uh, physically uh, punish you, but that only affects your bio, your, your, your physical state, which can be healed. But solitary confinement damages your psycho, psycho and social. And that is.
And one of the things that you can do is that be more outgoing, build on your relationships, talk to strangers, talk to your barista, talk to your baker, talk to the cashier. Yeah, it'll help you. Okay, now number three. Uh, exposure to the natural world is a very powerful antidepressant. Yeah, being out there in Mother Nature, going out for a walk in the park. Yeah, it's as simple as going for a walk in the park. It is a very powerful antidepressant. Uh, one of the things that is recommended is step on the earth, step on the ground, uh, on soil, yeah, barefooted. You want to make that connection with Mother Nature. So uh, do find the opportunity, go to a park, uh, sit on the bench, remove your shoes or your slippers or sandals and make contact with Mother Nature. Yeah, skin to earth. Yeah, all right. It's a very powerful antidepressant. Uh, okay. Another thing is that uh, interacting, yeah, being with other people, being more social, is because uh, when we start to be in groups, yeah, of course we start to gossip, lah. But another thing is that we tend to start to solve other people's problems. Everyone has got problems of their own. Yeah, uh, when you're alone, we tend to get too bogged down too overwhelmed by our own problems. But when we are with other people, when we share the problems and they share their problems with us, we tend to solve problems for other people. Now, why? I, I mean, I'm still finding out why, 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 why we do this. That's an evolutionary uh, explanation to it. But, uh, Instead of going uh, thinking about why, now I think about okay. So now this is powerful. Let's try to do it. Let's try right now. Uh, employee engagement programs when you go out for coffee and tea with your friends, uh, that is very very powerful. Social interaction, yeah. Uh, when we come together in tribes in groups, we tend to solve other people's problems, yeah. And also we tend to share our joy. We tend to laugh and we tend to talk about what is it that we have achieved. So uh, happiness when shared is double. Uh, sorrow, sadness, when it's shared, it's cut in half. So when you're happy and you share it, you double it. When you have uh, sadness, sorrow, when you share it with your friends, you cut it in half. Yeah. In other words, the burden is not being shared by the tribe, by the group. Yeah. Okay, so those are some of the lessons that we can learn. And and they also, this is in the UK. They found that on average, uh, kids nowadays in the UK, I don't know about Malaysia, yet, we haven't done a study in Malaysia. Kids in UK, they now get less than 17 minutes per day of time being in the outside. 17 minutes. Now, 17 minutes is the minimum time that is regulated by law for prisoners to spend time outside of their prison cells. So to be humane, to have a very humane prison, you need to allow your prisoners at least 17 minutes of outside time of being in the outdoors per day. But kids nowadays are getting less than 17 minutes of being in the outdoors. That is in the UK. I don't know about Malaysia. Uh, but I would use that as an example, a, a highly developed nation. Yeah? How much, how little time their children get to play outside being in the outdoors. So for those of us who have kids, yeah, who are parents, allowing your kids to go outdoors going outside the house is super, super important. Yeah. At least, uh, at least 20 minutes per day. Yeah. All right. It's good for their uh, psycho and social. Okay. Uh, do you have any other questions?
regarding stress, regarding anxiety, yeah, and regarding uh, the ways to overcome it. No? No questions? So if you want a therapy session with me, uh, if you want a one-on-one -on -one coaching or counseling with me, uh, do ask the organizer uh, for my contact details and we can set up a Zoom meeting or we can meet uh, maybe in your office or maybe at your place or maybe in a cafe and then we can have a private uh, session. Yeah, there's something that I'm willing to extend my services to. Because uh, in, in, in times like this, yeah, uh, it's, it's very challenging and I would say very historical time, yeah, historical period that we're going through, uh, everyone can benefit from a bit of help. Well, from whatever help that they can get, yeah, including myself as well. Okay, uh, now, in, early, earlier just now at around nine when it started i i kept talking about the subconscious yeah so what happens in uh, hypnosis is that we put you in a state of trance uh the malays will call it sedar tak sedar yeah it's either or you you are not awake you're not sedar and you're not unconscious you're not tak sedar or pengsan you're in between uh this is when your subconscious is open to whatever input. Your the this uh, prefrontal cortex yeah, is your thinking brain, your analytical brain, your intelligent brain. Uh, what we are trying to do is that we are trying to shut this down. Yeah, we are trying to put this to sleep, and we are trying to awaken the unconscious brain. Oh, sorry, the unconscious mind. And for this to happen, uh, we put you in a state of trance. Yeah, uh, somewhat almost sleeping. Yeah. When you find yourself trying to uh, sit very tight, very sleepy, you doze off. Uh, you still can hear sounds. You're still aware of what is happening. Yeah, uh, but then you are I mean, going to doze off. It's, it's that it's that uh, part is that is that state of mind that we want to put you in. Why? So that we can give you positive reaffirmations. Yeah, whatever good or whatever bad that is given during trance, your mind will remember it. Will remember it for life. Yeah. Now, when you come into consciousness, when you are awakened you might not remember what happened yeah uh but this doesn't matter it's already embedded in your uh, subconscious so that is something that uh, we do during hypnotherapy and uh one thing about uh, hypnotherapy or hypnosis is that there are two kinds one is stage hypnosis fantas stage for entertainment the other one is clinical hypnosis i do clinical hypnosis whereby uh, hypnosis is for therapy, is to, um, to, 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 to treat you, yeah? your uh, psychological issues. Whereas for stage hypnosis, it's just to entertain people. Now, it is still hypnosis. Yeah? Uh, it is something that uh, is real. It's not, uh, what do you call it? It's not an act, it's real. It's just to show people to create awareness on how powerful the brain is, how powerful the mind is, yeah, especially your subconscious. So I didn't do all that. What I do is clinical hypnosis, whereby it's private, it's one to one. Yeah, uh, me myself uh, going through hypnosis, being a patient, I find it to be very therapeutic. Yeah, very therapeutic. And uh, one thing by hypnosis is that the hypnotist or rather the therapist does not control your mind we we think that it takut lah want to do hypnosis takut that our, our mind is mind control that other people will control our minds yeah it, it, that is so wrong that is so wrong 
Uh, that is one of the myth or rather misconception about hypnosis. Uh, throughout the therapy process, you are in control of your mind. So at any time whereby you feel uncomfortable or you disagree with what the therapist says, you can just stop, you can just open your eyes or you can just ignore it. Yeah. Uh, so we won't get you to do silly things, we won't get you to reveal your account number or we won't get you to write a check for us. No, no, no. Uh, if that is real, if that can really be done, then I would be a millionaire. <laughs> Uh, therapists out there will become millionaires. They will control your mind and they'll get you to mention what your bank, bank account is. So that is not hypnosis, yeah? That is purely Hollywood movies, entertainment. So for those of you who want to try hypnosis, yeah, please do reach out to me or reach out to the organizer. Then we can uh, plan, arrange for something. Okay, come. Q&A, any questions from uh, Tan Ken or from uh, Hasna or from Atika, Samuel? Let's have a Q&A. Okay. Uh, interesting. No, thanks. Uh, okay, there's a question earlier from Samuel. Not being able to let go of bad personal and work episodes. Ah. Why? Why is it that you're not being able to let go? Uh, uh, but a more we tend to still hang on to it yeah because it makes us feel good uh for example if something bad happened to me my boss did something to me that uh is uh, very hurtful yeah is undesired i may hang on to it because why i get other people to sympathize with me when other people are like say on you or oh, poor you yeah over and over and over again, I get attention. So sometimes people hang on to their past, hang on to their issues and problems. Why? Because they get attention. Yeah, uh, they get sympathy from other people. Uh, no, that is one of the reasons yeah, why people hang on to it. Uh, another reason why people hang on to it is that because of resentment yeah. uh, or rather they are still in the stage of being denial or being angry that no this can't be true this, this this cannot be happening to me yeah i'm a performer at work how can he say that my presentation or my report was lousy right so if uh, for samuel yeah if you can't let go of personal uh and bad personal work episodes uh perhaps you can have a more uh deeper conversation about it yeah and we'll, we can find ways to uh, address it yeah and to manage it now some things some things cannot be solved if it cannot be solved we just need to manage it and live with it yeah uh for example uh if you have a, if i have a medical condition where there's no cure for it, whereby it's a hereditary, then instead of solving it, I live with it, I manage it. So the Taoists have this saying, yeah, if it's, uh, if it's a problem that can be solved, why do you stress out about it? If it's a problem that cannot be solved, then why stress out about it? Uh, in other words, there's no point stressing about it. If you can solve it, solve it. If you can't solve it, then live with it. Yeah. Uh, it sounds simple, but it can be done, yeah, actually. So Samuel, if you 
if you want to learn to let go of your bad uh, personal experiences and work experiences, uh, do let me know. And that's one interesting thing about what Hasna said. Uh, no, Hasna, sorry, Atika. Ah, being too hard on yourself. So, Atika, uh, I suggest you do this, yeah? Uh, when you take a shower, why shower? Because the element, the uh, natural elements, a fire, water, earth, wood, wind, yeah? So, water is the easiest. When you take a shower, I want you to put your hand on your chest and say that four things, yeah? I'm sorry. I forgive you. Thank you. I love you. Yeah? So for those of you who think that you are taking it too hard on yourself, this is what you can do, yeah? Um, you may cry, you may become angry, you may, doesn't matter. You just want to flush out your emotions and most importantly, you want to acknowledge yourself. Yeah? Uh, people who take it too hard on themselves is because they want to uh, prove or they want to be responsible for other people. So they give their energy, their time, their love, their forgiveness to other people. But they forgot to give it to themselves. Yeah. Yes, it's good to get other people to say sorry to you. It's good to get other people to say I love you. But how many of us do it to ourselves? We, we we forgive our colleagues, we forgive our, uh, our our subordinates, we forgive other people, we love other people, we do things for other people, but what about for us? Yeah? So one of the things that you can do, uh, better still if you can go to a beach or you can uh, go to a park, yeah? At least there's an element of nature. Yeah? Uh, so the shower is the easiest. You put your hand to your chest and say, I'm sorry, I forgive you, thank you, I love you. Right? Say it about two or three times. Right? Close your eyes and say it with your heart and soul. Right? So that is one of the ways of us not being too hard on ourselves. That's one of the ways of us acknowledging ourselves. Yeah. All right. So, uh, I think you have shared, uh, we check it. Okay, great. Well, then what I get from counseling sessions. Okay, great, fantastic. So, uh, just a very quick recap, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, before we end, since there's no more questions. Um, I would say that uh, when it comes to anxiety, yeah, it's because we dwell on our past, we feel guilty about our past, uh, we are very uh, uncertain about what's happening now in the present, and we are fearful about the future. We don't know what's going to happen to our money, to our family, to our business, to our career. Yeah? And then when it comes to our past, we tend to think, I should have, I could have, I should have bought that car instead of that car. I should have saved in that investment, not in that investment. I should have put my money there, not there. I could have, I should have, I could have, yeah? So instead of uh, going in that uh, thinking pattern, rather ask yourself, why did it happen for you? Not to you, but why did it happen for you? Yeah? Now, regarding the present, it's all about your habits. What do you do today? What do you do today? Focus on your habits. For example, eating well, sleeping well, uh, using a uh, language that empowers, um, uh, being with people uh, that, 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 that encourages you, that builds you up. Yeah? Do things that you enjoy and find personally, personally meaningful. Yeah? uh being a contribution so these are things that will contribute to happiness i think i shared this i i mentioned this in my last coffee conversation last month the things that will increase happiness besides money 
will be your relationships, your hobbies, your pastimes, uh, things that you find uh, meaningful and valuable, uh, a contribution, uh, finding the meaning of your work. What does it mean to you? What does it mean on a greater scale? Your career, your business. Yeah. And one thing about the future is develop optimistic and new patterns. Uh, you cannot control what's going to happen, but you can be optimistic about it. Yes, yes. Take precautions, prepare for the future. Yeah. Uh, but instead of being it, being pessimistic about it, which will only erode the quality of your life, uh, be optimistic about it. Uh, being optimistic also helps you in problem solving. Because when you problem solve, you want solutions, you want ideas, you want the fresh perspectives. Yeah. One of the things that I can help you with that is optimism. Yeah. Now it's not blind faith. It's not that oh good things will happen to me. No, it's uh this uh it's called self-efficacy and self-confidence. Uh remember, uh, I don't know whether you did the assessment, but one of the pillars or one of the factors when it comes to motivation is your self-efficacy and self-confidence, right? And one of the ways of building self-efficacy and self-confidence is setting goals. Okay, right. So um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to my not so dramatic story of me, uh, of my near, near drowning experience back in 2017 on the 14th of February. Oh, what a day, yeah? Valentine's Day to, re to be remembered. Um, I really thought that that's it. My life was going to end. That's it. I thought that, okay, bye-bye. But uh, somehow I'm given a second chance in life. And every day when I wake up, uh, gratitude. Practice is uh, gratitude. Be thankful. See, thank. Thank you for the things that you already have. How do we promote? Ah, resilience. Ah, great. Fantastic. How do we promote resilience? Ah, oh, fantastic. That's a good question. Ah, resilience. Okay. Uh, Samuel, I'd like to know, what do you mean by resilience? Well, what is your understanding of the word resilience? And why do you want to be resilient? In terms of your business, your career, your relationships? What's the difference between resilience and persistence and perseverance? Yeah, okay. One of the things of uh, one of the ways of uh, being resilient is uh, developing positive and optimistic thinking habits, thinking patterns. Yeah, uh, right. <clears throat> so, um, Samuel, one of the things you can do is when you wake up in the morning, list down. At least five things. I usually say three things, but I'm going to give Samuel extra a bit, yeah? Uh, extra homework, extra exercise to do. Uh. List down five things that you're thankful for. Yeah? Before you start to think about what are things that you need to achieve, whether it's a 100K or whether it's a promotion or whether it's uh, securing that deal, before we think about how to uh, the things that we don't have, think first of the things that you already have. Now, now, the thing about being resilient is you need to do it every day. It's a practice that, that it's a habit. It needs to be every day, every day, every day. And then later on, after a month, two months, three months, then your mind becomes more resilient. It, now, being resilient is not an overnight thing. It's not that I can just tap you on the shoulder and then you become resilient. Yeah. It is like building your biceps. It needs to become a habit. It needs to become a daily practice. 
Yeah. So one of the things, Samuel, what you can do is that gratitude. Think about that. At least five things that you're very thankful for and be specific. Yeah, be specific. Okay, so um, I would like to know what do you mean by resilient and uh, in which area of your life do you want to be resilient? Yeah, uh, to help my staff who may be facing challenges through uh, about the COVID-19. Yes, of course, fantastic. So Samuel, uh, that is uh, one of the things that we as managers or we as business owners or we uh, as people who have subordinates our concern is that uh, uh, how do you help your staff through these challenging times, yeah, COVID-19. That is something we all, we all are facing. Uh, one of the things that you can do is uh, try to encourage them to uh, meditate, try to encourage them to uh, these deep breathing exercises, stress management, maybe you yourself yeah samuel you can lead a stress management uh, uh, uh short course online course or session uh, with your staff yeah uh teach them about deep breathing and and uh talk about things that may happen after the good things that may happen after this whole mco after this whole COVID episode yeah uh why it's just to plant hope in other people yeah, it's uh trying to get to see things from the eyes of a bee and not a fly whereby a bee yeah will tend to look for flowers whereas a fly will tend to look for trash will tend to look for garbage so get in uh, conduct a half an hour or one hour session with the staff to talk about what are things that can happen may happen yeah uh, after COVID, after MCO, and say things from a bee's point of view, from bee's perspective. Yeah. Uh, also, as a manager, it's as simple as giving them assurance, saying that it's okay, things will get better. Yes, we do have the things, the steps that we take uh, to ensure that uh, the company still survives, that the job is still secure. Uh, but give them some a bit of hope, a bit of encouragement. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to your yeah. resilience. Hmm. Uh, encourage your staff to continuously do what they enjoy doing, whether it's jogging, swimming, cycling, things that they can do within the limits of this MCO. Uh, what they call that? Uh, rules and regulations. What is it that they can continuously do whether it's baking yeah whether it's reading whether it's uh, exercise whether it's yoga encourage them to, co to continuously do that yeah uh, now uh yes i understand samuel that uh in this mco we have this thing called screen fatigue whereby we look at the laptop for eight hours or more than eight hours not just the laptop but your phone as well yeah so we may have two laptops and two phones and a tablet. So it, this uh, causes screen fatigue. Yeah. Uh, so get your staff to once in a while, I give them like a five minute break, 10 minute break, get them to shut all their screens, Yeah, shut all their screens and just look out through the window. Whether you look out to, to the tree, look at the trees or look at the sky, just uh, have these breaks, periodical breaks. Yeah, after one hour or after two hours or during lunch, tell them to shut down everything and just look out the window or look at other people, look at other things. Otherwise, we have this a screen fatigue. Yeah. So, uh, Samuel, I hope that helps. If you want more tips or ideas, then uh, we can communicate through email. Yeah, I'll give you my email address, Samuel. Okay, another thing is that um, I have a friend who is a certified yoga instructor and she does online classes as well. Um, she can also, Samuel, uh, if you want, we can have a half an hour session with your staff. Uh, not yoga, but stretching. 
things that we can do seated on a chair because uh, when working from home, we sit on a chair and we just look at the screen for long periods of time. So these uh, techniques, these exercises just involves you sitting down on a chair. Yeah. So Samuel, if you want to arrange for a half an hour, 40 minute session with your staff, let me know. I can uh, get my friend to help us out. All right. Okay. Ah, okay. Samuel's email address is Samuel dot Lee at people when can drop from when can drop from. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's build our resilience. Yeah, let's build our body, mind, and spirit to power us through through these difficult times. Uh, me myself included, I don't know what's going to happen. Let's touch base. Yes, I don't know what's going to happen in the next two weeks, two months. Uh, do you know what's going to happen? Our understanding of COVID is we, we still don't have a grasp about it. Yeah, We can't make heads and tails out of it. Uh, my sister is uh, uh, in public health. Uh, so compared to other things like dengue, malaria, TB, HIV, uh, COVID is still a big question mark. We still don't know a lot of things about COVID. Yeah? So <laughs> that is uh, something that we depend our scientists to come up with uh, solutions okay? uh, in the meantime what we can do with ourselves is we can continuously build on our body mind and spirit yeah whether it's exercise meditation getting good food enough sleep yeah uh, being very prudent about our uh, money uh, investing so uh, that is something that we can control. That is something that we can focus on, right? Yeah. Oh, nothing. Nothing. I would like to say is that uh, one hour before you go to bed, yeah, one. It is recommended two hours, but I'll go easy on you. Uh, one hour before you go to bed, don't look at any screen. So, if, for example, if you go to bed at uh, say eleven o'clock, by ten o'clock no more screens whether it's tv screen laptop screen uh tablet or phone screens one hour before no yeah uh maybe turn to books turn to your musical instruments just uh enjoy the company of others or go for a walk in the neighborhood one hour before you go to bed avoid screens yeah that will help you uh, get a better quality night's sleep. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us uh, in this second coffee conversation. I'm sorry about the video clips. I don't know why is it that you're going to hear the audio. Uh, this is something that I need to rectify with the organizer. Yeah. So if there are no more questions, uh, I will touch base with you, Samuel Lee, and for the rest of you, you can also communicate with me uh, using email or you can just uh, communicate with the organizer. Uh, I'm still open to your assessment, your M factor uh, assessment from the previous coffee conversation. Uh, the only person to send it to me was Jessica, and I replied to her. I don't know whether she's with us today. Jessica Lee, I think. Uh, is she with us today? No, I don't think so. Yeah, all right. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Hasna, uh, Samuel, uh, Atika, uh, who else is here? Tan Kian, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, I hope you have gained something, some kind of a tip or tool or idea or some kind of like, oh, okay, 
and if you have please put it to practice immediately uh also one of the ways of remembering what you've learned immediately remembering what you've learned is to teach it to other people so if let's say la, you learn something one thing about for, uh, today's session immediately go and teach someone else go and say hey you know what you know what uh come come i teach you how to do deep breathing this is what you do yeah okay if, when you teach someone you retain 75 no 90 percent of what you learn once again yeah when you teach someone else what you learn you retain 90 percent of the information yeah so please do share this knowledge of whatever tips or tools that you got from this session please do share with your colleagues your friends your family members right so thank you very much uh terima kasih uh hasna yeah terima kasih hasna from what is this malsa malsa corporation thank you very much and i hope to see you again in next month's coffee conversation yeah that is all from me from uh excel academy i would like to say thank you very much and all the best Thank you, Duncan.